just type something in the chat. Hello, everybody. Um, I am Grant McKenzie. I'm here representing the uh, Montreal team. Um, I am in my office now. My Montreal team is actually uh, out covered in coffee. So um, I just wanted to, I thought, I, in, in our discussions and organizing this um, Spatial Data Science Symposium, we thought it would be interesting since we can't all meet in person and we have these kind of distributed groups to have a bit of a break from um, talking about spatial data science and the various associated um, topics and instead uh, maybe have a bit of a competition or a bit of a game uh, that is unsurprisingly geographically related. Um, so something to do with geospatial information. And uh, the proposal that we came up with was to, to play a sort of a, a game that you can play online. Uh, the scores are recorded. It's associated with your name, as well as the region that you're in. So your IP address is actually recorded. Um, and so that we can actually see, uh, compare across regions, how well people do, sort of a fun competition, as well as sort of see in general how people are doing um, uh, as people enter their names. So I'm going to share a link. Um, and it's also on the program, if you need it. So in the chat, there's a link to um, it's HTTPS colon slash slash guesser, G-U-E-S-S-E-R dot C-A slash S-D-S-S 2022. Um, and I will share my screen and quickly just show you what that actually looks like. If I can figure this out. So you should hopefully be seeing what happens when you go to that URL. Um, and this will give you a prompt telling you a little bit about the game. Uh, and so the concept behind this, and some of you might remember Wordle and the geographic version of Wordle that came out, Wordle, Wordleville or whatever it was, uh, various iterations of that. The issue is a lot of us in geospatial data scientists can hopefully appreciate was that um, the Wordle version um, actually calculated distances in a way that we as geographic information scientists probably disagreed with. Namely, it took centroids of countries and calculated distances based on centroids rather than a topological approach, which might look at the adjacency of country boundaries, for instance. So this was a version I created to do just that. Um, the idea is that you enter your name um, and you are presented with the shape of a country in blue or a bluey green kind of there. Um, and it's up to you to guess uh, what country you think that is purely based on the shape. At least to start, we get purely based on the shape. On the left-hand side, you can see that there's actually a scale bar. So it tells us a little bit of information about that. We also start with a score of uh, 50,000. Now, every guess you make where the country is further away from the country that you're guessing. It calculates the distance between those countries and subtracts that number of kilometers from your score. So your score decreases with the more guesses you have. So if you guess it in one, you would keep that score of 50,000. And every other subsequent guess you make uh, that is incorrect will decrease the score by the value of the distance away from there. So I'm just going to randomly guess some countries here. You'll notice there's a type ahead here because there's various different spellings and various different um, names for nations, depending on how, how, where you're coming from. So you can select from the drop down and hit France and hit submit. And what you'll see is it actually zooms out. It shows you France. It colors it in light red or a pink there, telling you that's an incorrect guess, but also allows you to see the distance actually between uh, the country that you guessed and the country that you are trying to guess. Um, it also tells you how far away it was in terms of kilometers. You can change that if you're uh, more interested in, in miles, you can change that in the settings. But we can keep guessing. Um, I'm just going to randomly guess some countries here to show what happens when you don't guess it correctly. And it will continue to uh, answer certain questions. Uh, or sorry, I will continue to um, enter values here. Um, we can do things to get uh, a little bit more interesting. Uh, just hit submit. Right, um, and we can guess, guess in Indonesia or something like that. You all might be screaming at me telling me you know the name of the country, and that's fine. Um, but I just want to demonstrate what happens if you don't get it correct. So, say, India. So, if you don't get it correct, um, or if you do get it correct, the um, it'll pop up and tell you the name that you chose. 
Um, it'll actually give you a map so you can see the base map now, so you know what you're looking at. Um, and it will um, tell you, give you the option to play again. Now you'll notice if I just view the map, my score is down to 18,000 here. That's actually getting recorded in the database, as well as my name and the the IP address that gives me a region for where I am located. So what I want to encourage you all to do is go to this, maybe play in teams or play by yourself. And throughout the remainder of the, the, the symposium, uh, we encourage you to keep coming back and playing and, and just seeing how, if you can do better, if you can get a better score. Um, uh, tomorrow, we have a session um, where we talk about the results of the competition. So I'll do a little bit of analysis right before the start, the results section, and uh, summarize maybe what the results are, see if there's certain regions that are better at playing this game than other regions. I'll report on who the, who the most accurate person was in terms of getting the highest score, um, consistent score over time, or the average of scores we start to see. And I thought it would just be a really interesting approach to doing this. Um, if you want to start playing now and you want to join some teams, um, we're going to close this session so that you can go back to the, uh, the social lounge. Um, you can join an existing table. You can also create your own table uh, with people if you want. So you can sit around and play the game together. Uh, I thought it would just be a kind of fun and interesting way to, to engage, have a bit of social time uh, that's still sort of geographically focused. So I'll stop sharing for now. Um, I'll try and answer any questions if, if people have them. Otherwise, feel free to join one of the tables and get started playing. Okay, uh, welcome back, everybody. You get to see my face again <laughs> from the last session. Um, we are at the point in our program where we are going to report on the results of the, the Guesser competition. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, yesterday I introduced the Guesser competition, and, and throughout the conference, you've been encouraged to, to play the game, um, just have a little bit of fun in teams or individually. Uh, and see see where it goes. Um, and I will share my screen to share some results from this. Okay, so the results of guessers, what you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. Um, so if we just look at the numbers, um, we had 465 guesses. So that's individual guesses of people um, guessing what country they were seeing based on the outline of that country and uh, proximity to nearby guesses. Uh, we had 38 distinct players, so this is based on their name that they entered. Um, so given the number of, of people that have joined the, the sessions, it's a, a decent number to see 38 uh, unique people contributing to the game or playing the game, which is uh, quite interesting. And that actually represents uh, 22 cities in 11 countries over four continents. So we are getting quite a, a global reach for um, the, the symposium, which is nice to see, and, and people were interested in, in, in playing the game and, and being involved with the community that way, which is nice. Um, interestingly, we had 1.58 was our average number of guesses per game. And if we looked at the, the games that ended in a correct answer, uh, there was 1.85. So close to two guesses to get to the correct answer on average. So overall, actually, people did pretty well. I should have reported the standard deviation on that. I didn't. Um, but we did see that uh, in general, the people it took longer people to get a correct guess, obviously, than than uh, to not get a correct guess there. So just by the numbers, the, the results that we're actually seeing. Um, winners. So if we want to have winners, because this is a competition and uh, we don't, I don't think we have any prizes, but, you know, maybe free entry to next year's spatial data and symposium or something would be great. I, I, that's a bit of a joke because it's, it's free to enter anyways. Um, the individual winners uh, for who played the game, um, Lucy and Ivan were the winners, uh, depending on how you chose um, whether it was, you know, correctness in terms of the average score to get the correct answer or in terms of the number of correct answers out of the total number of times they played the game. So you can see the values there, 14 out of 16, uh, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so 16 times playing the game and actually getting correct answer 14 of the times uh, for Lucy, uh, an average score of 44,000 and had two perfect guesses, meaning guessed the correct 
uh, country within the first try, so uh, on the first guess. So Even had uh, 13 um, correct guesses out of 21 um, times playing the game, uh, average score of 45,000, and had six perfect guesses over the course of playing this game as well. So meaning guessing it within the first time, first turn uh, of playing the game, which is interesting. If we look at the actual overall um, rankings or scores, you, you might see your name there. If you take a look through it, uh, I will note that uh, – um, five was Team Glasgow, because I think a number of people entered Team Glasgow as their name, which is a perfectly fine way of doing it. Um, and, but this was the rankings we looked at in terms of average score, weighted a bit by a number of times you played the game there as well. So uh, you, you should, uh, if you see your name there, congratulations. If you didn't see your name there, that's that's okay. You're, you're still a winner in my books, right? If we look at uh, winners by city, right? So... I, I took the IP addresses of everybody that played, uh, ran to a geocoder to extract the, the country and the city, uh, and we can see which cities, cities were the winners. Uh, Vienna um, was the overall winner for the game, uh, had 34 correct answers out of 52 times playing the game for an average score of almost 46,000, so a pretty good score there. Uh, Marseille had 14 out of 16 correct answers with an average score of 44,000. Now, you might notice that that was very similar, if not exactly the same as Lucy's score uh, at the individual game, because I think she was the only one playing in Marseille, but that's still a, 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 a great representation of, of the city uh, to, to see you show up here in second place of the overall uh, winners by, by region, by city here. Uh, again, if we rank it in the top 10, uh, we see Vienna, Marseille, Glasgow was in third, Frankfurt, Amherst in the United States, Athens in the U.S., uh, Santa Barbara in the U.S., um, then we see Gothenburg in Sweden, and Atlanta and Lisbon. So again, again, a good sort of diverse um, coverage of the globe in terms of who we know is attending this conference, and very uh, happy to see people um, partaking in the game and collaborating and having some fun with it. The last thing I'll say is just sort of winners by nation, right? So we had, in some cases, multiple cities per, per country. Um, so what was the overall... Um, distribution there. So not surprisingly, in this case, Austria was was the winner for from the country perspective with 34 correct answers. Because uh, based on the IP address, anyways, Austria was the only city participating from, Aus from Austria. Um, and then the second actually was the United States. Um, so we had more people contributing from different cities across the United States, which uh, pumped it into second place. So on average, had 23 correct answers with a score of uh, 45,000. If we look at the ranking of countries or nations in terms of uh, who contributed and how well they did in the game, Austria, United States, France, uh, United Kingdom, Germany, Sweden, Chile, Portugal, Ecuador, and Turkey. So quite an interesting range of, of countries that actually contributed to the game, which was, was great to see. So I will stop it there so that I can go back and see if there was questions. Um, nothing in terms of specific questions, but you're welcome to follow up with me specifically if you want me to export your, your scores so you can see them there as well. Um, after this, the SDSS 2022 uh, version of Guesser will, will go away, but guesser.ca still exists out there. It's just a game that you're welcome to play um, for fun and, and, uh, and share with people if you found it interesting. So um, thank you very much to everybody. We really appreciate it. Um, there was a quick question here. What is the average longitude and latitude of the correct guesses? I should, that's an interesting geographic question. We should figure that out and, uh, and report on it, but uh, I'll take a look. So thanks very much. I think now we're at the 11.15. We got 15 minutes, uh, or 11.15 here in, in Montreal, I should say. Uh, 15 minutes for a break, and we'll be starting in 15 minutes um, with the next keynote. So thanks, everyone. Uh, hope you're enjoying the symposium.